forgot to change the intro. Hey friends, I'll be right with you. I just wanted to change the intro so it doesn't say I'm live narrating because that's not what's happening. Okay. Hello, hello. I got you, Laura. Incoming. Maybe. Maybe. There we go. Invite. 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 Okay. I know Ali can't join us tonight. I don't know if Ruthie will be here or not. She wasn't feeling good earlier, so... We'll see if she pops in. We'll send her an invite. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Hi. Hello, are you all doing? Hi. Yes. Hi. <laughs> How is everybody? Very good. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Sorry, I was almost late. I was actually finishing up pickups for Fox. <laughs> so, and there's a base party in my neighborhood. So, they're done. They're done. Their scent is good. So. Awesome. All right. So we'll give people, I guess, a few minutes to start or to, to start to move in, to walk in. Yeah. So tell me about your day while we wait for people's. <laughs> Who like, wants to go first? I was just going to say it was like a typical Friday, but we did get to go out for dinner, just me and my husband without the kids. So that was amazing. That's <laughs> that awesome. never happened. That's awesome. What did you have, Kara? Um, I had fish tacos. It was amazing. Yum. Yum. Like Mexican style? Um, Kind of, but like definitely with like, there's a Mexican restaurant about 45 minutes away that we go to all the time. And this was definitely not that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's still time away, time alone, date night. Exactly. Awesome. What about you, Chris? Um, pretty typical Friday with the day job, and then had a little free time before this. So, what's your day job? Or if you, um, you want to share? I was gonna say it's at a credit union, so it's pretty cool. Hmm. Like yeah. bank teller stuff, or yeah. I used to work at a credit union. Oh, nice! <laughs> I, I worked at SunTrust for like four months. Oh wow! <laughs> Funny. Oh right out of college. Right. So, what about you, Jen? What did I do today? Mm -hmm. That was the question. Uh, I don't remember. Let's see. I hung out with my parents for a little bit, and that's about it. <laughs> well, that. What about you, DJ? John in parental unit time. That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, not much. I wrote and worked. That's all I did today. Very boring life. No. Today was my cheese shop day. So I had cool. cheese. It was dead. Yeah. I only made two grilled cheese sandwiches, which is like the best feeling in the world because I hate making grilled cheese sandwiches. But <laughs> I think it just on cheese. So, yeah. All right. Well, I, people have had three minutes. I think that's enough time. So welcome, everybody, <laughs> to Books and Audio. <laughs> I don't know. She was uh. feeling sick earlier, and then there was all of that controversy and, you know. All right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't know if she's going to or not. Uh, my guess is probably not. So okay. it will be just us. But yeah, welcome everybody to Books and Audio. Our guests tonight are Laura and Chris. Chris is an audiobook narrator. And Chris, you predominantly do like romance and like fantasy romance? Mostly that's what I picked up so far is um, ro male male romance and then fantasy that had some romance in it. So yeah. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. I think you were actually one of the first narrators I came across on TikTok when I first started. So, oh, yeah, I think we, we kind of were putting out videos starting at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they show us all the same thing. Well done, DJ. Well done. <laughs> but, uh, and Laura, you've written, you're mostly writing romance. Yeah, I like strictly write romance, but I kind of like dabble slightly in like a few different um, like subgenres, but mostly contemporary romance. Okay. You've got a lot of books out. How how many exactly? Um, I think if you can at, even remember. <laughs> I think we're at fifteen now. And nice. Have... <laughs> yeah. So, do you predominantly do um, male male romance, or do you like mix it up? 
So it's a mixture. Um, uh, right now, it's not quite even, but it's probably going to, like, even out within, like, the next year of, like, my MM versus, like, MF romances. Because predominantly, I think for this, like, coming year, most of the books are going to be MM except for one, I think. And the rest are all going to be, yeah, the rest are going to be all MM. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, how did you start then? We'll start like with your journey. When did you start writing? How did you get started writing? Yeah. So, um, I've been writing, well, I've been published for just over three years. Um, so, I've been writing for about four. And um, it kind of honestly started as like to help with my mental health um I just like did it as an outlet just to kind of like let you know my creative juices flow and I had these stories like pinging around my head but I had no plans on publishing whatsoever like it was all supposed to just be for me it wasn't ever going to see the light of day but um I ended up randomly in a Facebook group chat um with other people who were talking about starting um their author journey and I don't know how I ended up there it was like coincidence but then I was like would you read a couple chapters of what I have written if it's good I'll finish it and publish it if it's crap I'll just keep it for myself <laughs> and that's how Secret Smiles saw the light of day was because they were like, you need to finish this. <laughs> that's awesome. Validation. Yeah. And that's kind of how it all started. And I guess the rest just snowballed from there. That was like 15 books in three years. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. It looks impressive. I wish I could do that. Uh, since I started publishing, I've released a book every three months. Right. Um, and starting this year, I have decided to up it to every two months. So wish me luck. <laughs> All right. Now, would you say that's because you had previous things like already kind of waiting to be published or because you were just writing so much? Um, I'm a pretty fast writer. And I decided with my kids both now being in school full time that like I have a lot more time that I can actually dedicate to the craft. Mm -hmm. So it was just something that I felt confident in doing. And for the first time ever, I'm actually, like, ahead of schedule. I have about a book and a half to two books, like, written ahead of time. So. What an awesome thing. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And how do you, so how do you get, like, like, your book covers done in that amount of time? Like, do you, know, do you have someone, like, on retainer who's like, I'm waiting for Laura's <laughs> book? Or, like, do you send them, like, an idea? Or how does that work? Well, I usually, like, um kind like reach out to a cover designer um ahead of time when I, I either have the idea or um you know the book kind of already partially finished enough that I have an idea of what I want for the cover um I already have like the cover lined up for my March release and we've already started talks about like the May release and like what that design's gonna look like so um yeah I've just been using the same person for a while now but for the may release i'm actually switching to someone else but it's someone i'm really close with so i've already been like so what do you think we should do <laughs> <laughs> so these are, are these going to be like interconnected where like it won't matter that the covers like or like different like a different style i assume for a different cover artist so. yeah so so that's why like it's not happening till may that i'm switching cover designers is because it's going to be a new series and a new like its okay. own thing so it'll be complete yeah that makes sense that makes a lot of sense yeah all right chris what about you how did you get started narrating what's the deal um, from bank teller to <laughs> audiobook narrator yeah um i think i started in like really actually started auditioning and stuff in like June of 21. Um, and I had been kind of just sitting on the idea for like the year before that. Funny story, my mom is uh, visually impaired. So she randomly finds things that don't, you know, aren't your traditional like job kind of thing. And she was like, you were very creative. You did all this artistic theater art stuff. Like you were in music and choir. You should read books. You like books. Come on. And I just sat on it forever for like a whole year. And then I was like, you know what? Finally, I'm going to put out some auditions and um, just kind of started from there. So and I'm working on book number 
10 right now. That's almost oh. got about half a month left to finish it. That's That's awesome. cool. mm -hmm. And did you start like, did you like pick a certain genre? Did you go in thinking I'm going to do romance or did you just kind of browse? Like was it ACX? Kind of. Yeah. I was just kind of browsing through ACX and I went for, I started with like fiction stuff and just looking for like fantasy and fiction. Cause those are the genres I usually go for. And then I, um, was like, well, you know, let's see what's in like the LGBT kind of section and see what's in there. Put out a few auditions there. And then my uh, very first uh, like actual full time full book was um, with Kai Brightly and MD Gregory for Sold for the Night, which is a male male romance. Nice. Mm -hmm. In the early. But you said that you came from theater and music. Yes, I've always been um, in the creative stuff choir since I could even think about singing. And then I switched over to band in middle school and high school. I actually went to college for music and was trying to be a music teacher and then kind of finished that and said, I, I'm done with school. I don't think I can teach people this and just kind of let careers take me where they took me. And yeah, um, I was uh, doing a lot of I did a few different like management jobs that kind of were creative leaning but they were still like retail jobs and stuff and then um i've always been good at like teaching people how to do things and like helping them learn things so that helps so it's awesome it's funny how so many like of us narrators were like music people and then we're like you know mm -hmm. we're just gonna we're gonna go over here where maybe it's not quite so cutthroat and not yes. quite there's so much it feels like there's so much more opportunity for different voices where like within music opera music they're like oh but you don't sound like you know how you look and all that like, yeah no, it doesn't matter so it's like exactly you yeah because it's it's always funny because you think about things like when you look back on stuff and it's like well i was going to be a music teacher and so my first job out of college was cold stone creamery and if you're aware, if you're aware of what those are <laughs> singing ice cream store so <laughs> So that's what I did is I ran in a singing ice cream store and I taught other people how to run and work the singing ice cream store and how to sing the songs and stuff. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I know, so we're going to, I know we've been holding off the narration portion till kind of the end, but I feel like we have more viewers towards the beginning. So did you two discuss like a little blip to read or? We do have a little blip to read with the characters that? of, oh, what is the main character's name? I don't think it was in the text. Um, I probably forgot to like put it in. Uh, <laughs> I believe this is from Chuck's point of view. What um, was the name? Chuck. Okay, Chuck. Gotcha. Yeah, because he's just as the narrator. We don't catch his name, but then there's Simon, and then there's a guest appearance at the end. And this is from. Is this from Summer Memories, or is this? Uh, this is from Summer Dreams. So Summer um, Dreams. Yes. Yeah, so this released in December. Okay, is this part of this is part of a series, I assume, but are they standalones or is it like trilogy, like interconnected? They're interconnected standalones, so you can read okay. them in any order. Um, I know people who do. I also know people are anal and they have to read in order. And they have to read <laughs> beginning to end. <laughs> I bet we're going to Yep. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Chris, whenever you're ready. All right, cool. You guys can all hear me pretty well, right? Yeah. Because I can always get closer, so. <laughs> I can't mute myself, but I'll be really quiet. Uh, no, you're fine. All right. As I stand in the short line with Simon, waiting for the doors to open, my heart beats wildly in my chest. I can't believe I'm doing this. This is crazier than meeting a stranger. This is risky and scary, yet it feels so right at the same time. You look fucking hot. Simon whispers into my ear, and a shiver runs down my spine. You clean up well yourself, I reply with a flirty grin. I let my eyes roam over him, being obvious that I'm taking in his hot body. He's wearing the rainbow baseball cap that I picked out the other day, his long brown hair flowing out beneath it, and a part of me wants to flip his hat off and run my hands through his hair. He has on a shiny silver button-up t-shirt that is clinging to his chest in such a delicious way. His skin-tight jeans are leaving little to the imagination, but I love it. His clothes cling tight to his body similar to mine. But where I'm soft, Simon is all hard and fucking perfect. I lick my lips before looking back at his face. There is a smirk on his lips, but his caramel eyes are turning to that coffee color. They are full of lust, of want. For me, it's a fucking turn on. You like what you see? He questions, and I give him a playful shove. You know how hot you are, Anyone with eyes would like what they see. 
I tease. I should have brought a stick. I'm going to have to beat all the guys off of you tonight. He laughs before letting go of my hand to wrap his arm around my shoulder. Don't worry. I don't care if everyone in that entire bar tries to tempt me. I only have eyes for you. It's always been you. A tiny gasp leaves my lips, which makes Simon's smirk grow into a full-on smile, the type that always melts my heart. Once we are let into the club, we make our way to the bar, and I can't wait to get my hands on some liquid courage. I want him, and I want to run. I want this to work, and I'm afraid to even try. My mind and heart are in a battle, and I don't know which one will win. I try to remind myself that Simon never purposefully hurt me. I truly believe he never would. If he says he's here to stay, I have to believe that. What would you like to drink? Simon asks from behind me as we stand at the bar and wait for one of the bartenders to serve us. His arms wrap around my front, and he pulls me tightly to his chest. His breath is hot on my ear, and it takes more strength than I care to admit to stop my knees from buckling. Vodka, water, and crayon? I tell him over my shoulder. As I turn my face, his is close. I could easily kiss his lips. I want to, but I don't. Instead, I turn to look back at the bar. It feels good to have you in my arms again. He whispers. He has no idea how true those words are. I've been in the arms of many minute clubs. None felt this right. None felt this safe. None felt like I was exactly where I needed to be, like home. Once we get our drinks, we find a table to sit at and get ready for the show. Thank you for staying. Simon beams before sitting next to me. His knee bumps into mine, and I smile. I didn't realize how much I missed his touch until tonight. I'm not going to lie, I'm still nervous, but I won't run. I can't waste the chance to talk and see if we still feel the same connection we had as teenagers. If there is still something, a future even? He grabs my hand, giving it a soft squeeze. What we have between us has always been special. It's never gone away from me. He tells me, looking directly into my eyes. The honesty of his words is written all over his face. Me either. I admit for the first time out loud. But you hated me when I first showed up. He argues, looking confused, and I sigh before taking a sip of my drink. I never hated you. It was just the only way I knew how to protect my heart, because I still care for you so fucking much. His eyes go wide for a minute, and he takes a pull of his beer. Are you being serious right now? He asks. I wouldn't lie about that. I don't think I'll ever be able to stop caring about you. Lord knows I've tried. You were my first love, Sai. It's not an easy thing to let go of. Fuck, I didn't think I'd be letting this all out so quickly, but I can't help it. Once I opened my mouth, it just all came pouring out. In the middle of a busy fucking club, no less. Yet, here we are. Simon doesn't say anything more, but he leans over to give me another soft, quick kiss. I want more than tonight. I want us to try this again. I want another chance to have you in my life, as more than just a co-worker, as my partner. It's my turn for my eyes to go wide. Holy shit! He's just putting it all out there. My heart is screaming for me to say yes, but my brain is begging me to be cautious. I'm not sure which one to listen to, but I want more than just one night, too. There is no way that one night will be enough. Before I can answer, the lights start to dim, and a spotlight on the stage draws our attention. A beautiful drag queen with a lime green wig and a giant beehive enters the stage and shoots the crowd a magnificent smile. Hello, you beautiful souls! She shouts, My name is Lima Louise, and I will be your host for the evening. We have an amazing show lined up for you tonight, so buckle up. It's going to be a wild ride. She flirts with an over-the-top wink. We turn our attention to the evening's entertainment, holding hands and just letting things settle. Him and me? Together? Who knew? Yeah. In scene. <laughs> Well done. Well done. Thank you. I love how you put the voice so easily. 
Thank you. And it's always telling when speaking <laughs> and the accent at the end. Yes. <laughs> gotta oh. gotta dig into the southern roots every now and then, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> That's adorable. Yeah. I love the accent at the end. That nice. Was so <laughs> Super awesome. <laughs> So where are you guys actually from? You're from Canada, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm actually from South Carolina. I'm right. I'm right above you. North. Oh, nice. North Carolina. Like what was that page? <laughs> I'm right above Jen. It's like a sandwich. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that in a strictly platonic way, TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> No, We're not talking about the other kind of sandwiches. Food. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, um, is that like, what am I trying to ask? Hold on. Jen, you have a paper while I formulate my question. Okay. Got this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My, my, one of the things I struggle with most is uh, writer's block. Do you ever get that? And when you do... How do you beat it? So I do occasionally get it. Um, but I would say more than writer's block is just like my ADHD takes over. And then I, I can't do anything. Like it's not necessarily right. like a character block. It's more of a like paralysis of not ability to do anything. Yes. But um, when I have like true writer's block and I feel like, you know, I'm like stuck on a scene or I don't know where to go. My... The way that I have found to get over it the quickest is to, depending where I am in the story, either go back to the beginning or go back a couple chapters and just read until I get to where I'm at. And I feel like by rereading what I've already written and kind of getting back with the characters, um, it helps like inspire me to write more. Cool. Awesome. I also read that you are um, influenced by uh, music. How does that work for you when you write? Is yeah, just I'll let that go and then I'll. Yeah, I mean I'm hugely influenced by music. Um, not only do I write books, but I also write music. Um, oh, I didn't know you wrote music. Oh, That's cool. Okay. Yeah, I've written quite Sick. a few songs. Um, uh, some of my songs are actually featured in uh, my first series, Love in Siena. I kind of have like stuff sprinkled throughout the books. Cool. Um, and yeah, I find that often if a story isn't coming together and I'm struggling with it, it's usually because I don't have the right playlist. Um, but if I like, like find a better playlist that like I can connect with the music and it gets me feeling all of the feels, then it's like so much right. easier to write. Yeah, I, I think I relate with you in that way too. I don't write music, but I definitely use music to help me find what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. <laughs> so do you write, like, do you write instrumental lines? Do you write lyrics? What? So I usually, like, I, like, I mainly write lyrics, but um, I guess, like, the way I write songs is, like, the lyrics and the melody all come at the same time. Okay. Um, so oh, wow. It's, so it's, like, when I'm writing it, it's, like, kind of, like, all popping in and, like, by the, and then by the time I'm done the song, I'll like have like a voice recording, and then I go sit at the piano and figure out like what chords like I was thinking and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you sing the vocal cool. lines? Uh, I do. Yeah, like into my like phone when I'm like writing the song. Okay, gotcha. Just do so it all. You, I was gonna, are you ever gonna plan to release those? Like, is there a list on Spotify <laughs> where you can go and like hear the songs there, that are in? Uh, um, you should find a muse, ma'am, because it is free to use. It's slow, but it's free to use. I I think I am way more protective over my songs than I am over like my books and like that kind of writing, like my music. I I think maybe because it's more, it feels more personal. Um, yeah, like, I can see that. Yeah. So I don't know. I have toyed with the idea of releasing stuff like occasionally, but I haven't really done anything with it. Um, although recently I wrote a song for someone, I can't say who, um, who is considering writing like a mermaid kind of like story. And so I wrote her like a siren song. 
So that's, fun. that's so cool. Ooh, I hope fun. she writes it because um, I want I just want the siren song to be able to come out. No, <laughs> <laughs> that that's awesome. really cool. You always use it as like an inspirational cover or something. Yeah, or you could write your own siren story. I could. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, how do you um so when when you two were were you did you talk about the scene at all or were what was Laura were you just like here you go have fun? Well, I I left it. Um, she just sent me the excerpt and I was like cool and I just read through it and I was like huh, okay 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 and just I like to like feel the characters just like you do when you're reading like a regular book just like okay how do I how do I visualize and hear that character in my head and then go from there so yeah. But no direction was given. That's always fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was kind of like, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> no no, no stress. Fun. Just just go have fun with it. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty easygoing when it comes to most things in my life. Uh, so I'm just like, have fun. <laughs> awesome. And I love doing character voices anyway, so that's always nice. So. Yeah, I could definitely determine who was who in that there was never any question, which is awesome. And to be that consistent too, was very, very awesome. Yeah. Did you, when I know Laura was talking about how she goes back and she kind of like lives with the characters and also the music and like we so when you're doing, when you're narrating, Chris, do you go back to previous chapters to get you up to like where you are? For like um, what the character is doing or like the character voice and stuff. Sure, like so like if you like say you have to leave it for a few days for example, oh yeah and, when you, and you come back do you go back and listen to like the previous chapter or do you just kind of like skim or how do you um i'm pretty good on like um just like retaining like where the story is at that point in the chapters and stuff um and then as far as like characters when they get a little bit more complex i have i do like a what i call my character diary so like I uh, f- and I had to start this for one of the books that I did, which is a two book series. There were in the first book alone, there were over 15 named characters, not to mention the random like one offs. There were over 15 named characters and it was just like uh, ensemble main character cast. And it was like, oh, gosh, so many, so many. Um, so like I was just like, OK, <laughs> line by line, here's little snippets of like, you know, catch all clips of them. So I can be like, OK, what did that person sound like again? how like energetic or not energetic or like what accent did they have and just kind of go from there. So no, was it multiple POVs or was it just like main P- or third person POV when they all had lines or with that book, it was dual POV. So there was male main character, female main character, but it was an ensemble main character cast. They just weren't like the point of view. So, okay. so, you, could, so you could at least get a little break by not having to narrate in that voice for POV. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't um, like I didn't narrate the narration in their voices. It was just like, yeah, here's the omniscient narrator and then here's the characters. So that was nice. I guess that's considered third person point of view, kind of. Yeah. Cool. Secondary third person. I don't know. <laughs> that would be an author question. I'm like, am I, can I read? That's an author author question. Or like, am I like omnipresent God? Like, here is what is happening. Yeah. I only write in first person and like anything else I'm like, I don't know. Um, and I think mm-hmm. that it's definitely like in fantasy or paranormal, like that third person is like a lot more common. Whereas mm-hmm. in contemporary first person is more common and mm-hmm. um, like, yeah, first person, even I would say first person present is probably the most common That's in contemporary. Not- Mm -hmm. Um, some people do first person past, Past. um, I'm okay with either reading, but in contemporary first person is like what I devour. Mm -hmm. And I thought I couldn't read third person because I struggled with it so much until I picked up an amazing paranormal. And I was like, Oh, it just, I feel like it has a different feel to a paranormal written in third person than contemporary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I didn't stumble across a lot of first person present until like recently in my, I mean, I know, I feel like book writing, it goes through like phases, but you know, when I was growing up and reading like my historical romances and stuff, they're all, you know, third person past. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then there was some first person past, but then the, the present really started picking up. I would say like 
the, almost the later 2000s, like later, yeah. like in your teens. And then when I came on BookTok, I was like, why is everything in first person present? Mm-hmm. Like everything I was reading, everything I was, I was like, this is so weird to me. And then when I go back, because like now I'm narrating a suspense that was written in the 90s and it's third person past tense. And I'm like, this is so weird. Mm-hmm. Like switching back and forth is just bizarre. So. I feel like first person is just you just get so much more like you're so connected to the characters because you're in their head like you feel what they're feeling and Mm -hmm. and they're written really well like you are crying when they're crying and i love i love a good book that rips my heart out but then oh yeah for sure we all (laughs) we all that's awesome who has questions so i got a question um, so like I write sapphic and I write male, female. So for, I'm always interested in other people who write, you know, LGBTQ books. How do you, cause you write, you don't write sapphic, correct? I tried to look through your stuff. I didn't see any. I haven't written anything sapphic. Right. I had plans to, but the characters yeah. completely stopped talking to me. I think right. I was like <laughs> 10 chapters in and they were just like, Nope. And I was like, okay. (laughs) So my question is like, how do you get into that? Like for me, you know, I have lived in the LGBTQ community my entire life. Um, I've had female partners and everything. So I go off of my own past experiences. How do you as a, as a woman, you know, do that? I'm always curious how they, how you get into another man's mindset. Yeah, I mean, I would find, I think it's kind of similar when you're writing like ma- male female books, like, you know, getting into that guy's mind. Um, I also read like a lot of MM romance. And um, as of last year, I tried to predominantly read MM romance written by gay men. Interesting. Um, so that I could get like kind of more of a feel for how like they write it. I also am 100% adamant on having a sensitivity reader um, to make sure that I get things correct and to make sure that I'm not accidentally putting in something that could be harmful to the community. I'm also a member of the LGBT community, um, but obviously I'm not (laughs) a gay man. So so I do make sure I put in um, a lot of effort and, um, you know, have my fantastic sensitivity reader he is so amazing and um i love that he loves to overshare and (laughs) we have a fantastic relationship now and um it's just i've grown so much since working with him my first mm romance um i didn't know about sensitivity readers i did have a friend kind of helping me out um but i didn't have a sensitivity reader for that book but all of my MM romances since then have had one. And um, I've just noticed how my work has grown. And um, I love to be educated. And um, he, there's been times where I've written things wrong and he's called me out and he's just like, hey, 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 you can't do that. And I'm like, <laughs> but I don't take offense. I'm just like, cool. No. And then I change it. Like, cause it is what it is. Uh, I don't want to harm people. And Right. And that's, that's awesome. I'm, that's what I, that's what I wanted to know. Like, and I'm glad you're so open about it. Like, you know, yeah, I, I don't know. So I have a sensitivity reader to help me. You know, a lot of authors are like, listen, I can write what I want to write. And mm-hmm. it, that's the way it is. And it's like, well, you are not a gay man. You can't right. write what you want to write. <laughs> so exactly. No, awesome. Well, no. and when I sat down at like at first with my sensitivity reader, he was telling me how there's a lot of women who write MM romances who it's almost as if they're still writing MF romance, but they just mm-hmm. changed the like female character to a male name. Yeah. And, like, and he's like, that's not how it is. So he really educated me. Um, not that I was doing that, but he, you know, was really open and like educated me on, you know, how some people can write it wrong and um, still have like a huge following of women reading their books. Cause you know, they're more popular, but then refuse to listen to the gay community. And that frustrates me. And I've seen it on this app time and time again, 
where gay men will be like, this is harmful. And then, you know, females who read MM romance will be like, stop talking. And it's like, right. You're it's writing like, about, uh... <laughs> well, you're writing about their lived experience. If they're telling you it's harmful, it's you harmful and you need to listen. Mm-hmm. You have yeah. on this app all the time, too. No matter <laughs> Oh my. Yeah. It no, just yeah, frustrates me when like you're writing from someone else's voice and yet you're telling that specific voice to sit down and stop talking. Like, <laughs> excuse me? No, 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 no. Um, Chris, do you find that when you're auditioning on ACX that that's, there's a lot of that? Or do you find that a lot of that most of the stuff on there is actually sensitive or, and or accurate? Um, hmm. When it comes to auditioning, so I mean, the little excerpts that you get, I mean, they, at least from that little bit, seem to be, you know, okay. And then obviously you could go and read like the book blurb from Amazon or wherever and get a little bit more of a feel for it. Um, but I mean, it, it all just depends. Like you can, whenever you can kind of feel those, like they did the male female, but then they just made like Christina to Chris or something, you know? So it's just like, eh. This isn't really cutting it, so. Have you ever given, like, had to give, or felt like you needed to give feedback on that? Been like, hey, this is, or has there been a time where you've had to be like, hey, this is harmful representation? Thankfully, I haven't run into any projects that I've had to do that for, but obviously, like, items that you read yourself, and it's just like, meh, DNF. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. Well, I'm yeah. glad you haven't run into that in the project, because I don't know, that would be, that could be heartbreaking. yeah. And then um, the the ones that I just can't get behind them because they just don't they don't click with me is like the Omegaverse series kind of things. Those are a little too far fetched even for my fantasy liking. <laughs> and then yeah, they just get a little. Eh. That's what my sensitivity reader says too. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, I, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> what is there, can you be specific without getting us bananaed? I'm curious. We're not. We're, we're not going to get bananaed. Um, so if you have never read Omegaverse titles, they deal with shifters, uh, generally mostly like wolf shifters, um, and they go yeah. into the whole. Yeah, and <laughs> they go into the whole um, alpha, beta, omega thing, and um, the alphas are the masculines, and they're the ones that can procreate. And then the betas are the submissives, not necessarily like male, female, but they're just like submissive. And then the omegas are special in the fact that they are the receivers of the procreating. Yeah, it, it's labeled as like what they say, mpreg. Mm -hmm. Male pregnancy. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So they they bend the rules of reality a little bit in that like the omegas whether they're male or female have adapted to be able to carry absorb that. to carry that life uh whether or not it's through the normal reproductive parts it somehow their body shifts and yeah. accepts whatever it is that becomes the next human the next shifter life Christine. it's I out there really, really i literally popular thought... back in fanfic <laughs> Well, yeah, they you are. The Omega verse, and I was like, "Wait, I thought Omega verse was literally like was like male female <laughs> or not yeah, all of it." Yeah, yeah I had never heard it called that. I I had heard it called what Laura said, imp impreg. That's impreg. what they used to call yeah. it in fanfics. Yeah. yeah. yeah so there's lots of either. there's lots of queer Omega verse. Um, but according to my sensitivity reader, uh, <laughs> there has been a lot of talk from um some of the LGBT community community especially the trans community saying how they find it harmful um with these mpreg books because it's almost like you're erasing trans men mm -hmm. and um so there's a lot of communication around it still currently going on i feel like the lgbtq voices are kind of being shut down like it often happens <laughs> um and so we're not hearing about the conversation as much as I think it should be talked about and we should be listening to um, the voices of people who are saying it's harmful. Um, but I don't know enough about it for me and I'm not a member of the trans community so I don't think it's my place to really 
fully talk about it, but it's just something for people to think about and maybe do your own research about mm-hmm. and draw your conclusions kind of there. Ooh, it's interesting. I don't know if I... <laughs> there's there's a lot of talk and I'm just like... Cute. Yeah, I don't even know if I would know where to start. <laughs> I would just be like, what, <laughs> what am I reading? Approach with caution. Right, okay, Approach no caution. I might I might let the caution tape stay over there and you know if it's not yeah yeah I mean I'm not a uh, I'm not somebody that yucks somebody else's yum but I don't know that, 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 that on that level I especially if it's becoming harmful for a certain community right. I'm not I'm not I'm not all about that life but same um, like I'm the same I don't yuck someone's yum and if it's not a book for me it's not a book for me but my only concern is if the community is you know saying that that we need to listen to people if you know if somebody says it's harmful we have to start listening to that mm-hmm. no I, and i and i definitely agree with that um on another note so you've written you said 15 books yeah i think so published, <laughs> published 15 books um <laughs> have you noticed that you get you've gotten you said you were going to start doing every two months have you noticed that your writing has gotten faster over the last couple of years um or do you feel like you're still like in that i'm trying to remember i have been following you since my old account like back in 2020 and i oh feel like God. back then you were like not as methodic like you see i feel like weren't you like a, a pantser i'm still a pantser you're still a pantser okay it seemed like i remember you from NaNoWriMo and you're like i'm gonna try to do this plotting i'm gonna try and then <laughs> I remember, so I had to do plotting, and it was horrible. I hated it. So I had, <laughs> the reason I had to plot was because, um, so book two in my Love and Sienna series, there's a massive timeline crossover. Mm. So I had to plot because it was already written in book one. So I had to be like, okay, this happens here, and this, okay. And, oh um, <laughs> and I hated it. Oh, that was that was the worst. <laughs> as soon as you I got re- you past wrote an accountability that- for yourself. <laughs> yeah. As soon as I got past that point, I was like, "Yay! I get to just dance again." Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I am not. I am a hardcore pantser. I can't. I can't plot to save my life. <laughs> uh, but to answer your question, I do feel like I have gotten faster. But also, I have gotten. Uh, on the right ADHD medication, so that has helped helpful. tremendously. It's <laughs> always helpful. <laughs> We're big fans. See, I, of I need to get on. I need to get on something like that. But I've heard so many writers say that when they do, they lose like the creativity and they can no longer write. So I'm just broad dogging it, unmedicated, because I'm afraid of that happening. So maybe message me what you're taking because I'm curious. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, I've been through a couple different things. And honestly, like the dose that I'm on right now isn't fully working anymore. But I never found that it like, um, you know, stopped um, my creativity. And yeah, like the comment says, there are some meds that make you a zombie. But that means you're not on the right med or on the right dose. You should not feel like a zombie. Um, that's what my doctors have told me time and time again. And same with like my daughter's pediatrician because we're just starting her on ADHD meds. So um, they're like, if she's a zombie, it's not right. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but some people, you know, they just like the calm feeling. So, um, you know, they'll stay on that dose. Also, I know some people like me um, don't like to kind of go back to the doctor. So we just stay on the same dose, even if it's not fully right. Because it's like, well, I want to go back to the doctor. (laughs) Right. Um, But yeah, since I've been on um, ADHD meds when I got diagnosed like late last year, um, it was like a game changer. I was finally able to like focus again. Um, and thankfully, it didn't kill my creativity. And I feel like I did speed up even more because, like I said, I'm about a book and a half to two bo- books ahead, um, which has never happened before. So <laughs> I don't quite know. That's, that's that's reassuring. Yeah. Maybe I'll maybe I'll talk to a doctor. Hmm. 
I don't think it's like harmful. And if you don't like how you feel or if it starts it. killing, just stop taking all most or sorry, I wouldn't say all most ADHD meds are something you can come off of. Like, yeah. Um, yeah you don't have to wean yourself off of it like an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety medication um which my doctor didn't tell me i had to wean off of that stuff and i just stopped cold turkey uh, don't do that not recommended um yeah. <laughs> did you get like the brain zaps because i yeah i've been there uh yeah it was just yeah it was not good i was wondering why it was crazy uh <laughs> yeah i did yeah <laughs> i feel you i've been there yeah. Well, yeah. No, ADHD medication typically cool. you can just kind of stop. Cool. Yeah. I've got a fun book question. Yeah. Uh, let's start from DJ Krimer. What was the book that inspired you to start writing when you started writing? Um, I am actually dyslexic, so I didn't have a book. I wrote. Um, I did fanfics. Okay. Uh, to write th the endings of different TV shows. Nice. Uh, that's aging. <laughs> but, um, my first book that I published, I uh, I kind of did on a bet. Somebody who I thought was... Uh, my ex told me that uh, because I was dyslexic, I couldn't write a book. And oh, I haven't boo. published it. So I wrote a book and had it published. <laughs> did you um, did you ever listen to audiobooks before? Yes, I have been listening to audiobooks since again, and I'll age myself since books on tape. Mm -hmm. uh, My so, mom used to have those, and I was like, "Oh wow, you got like seven tapes for one book. <laughs> it's crazy." Yes. So because uh, <laughs> that, that was yeah. before CDs. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was before CDs. <laughs> um, I am before CDs. So, yes, um, I started with the tapes, and then um, I know we don't talk about the author that which shall not be named on TikTok anymore, but uh, that narrator, I'm just going to say, he is the one that really turned me on to uh, what an audiobook narrator is, because he really did the voices and really got into the acting. Jim Dale? Um, I'm sorry? Was it Jim Dale? Yes. Yes. Um, so that's when I really oh, was like, God. I, I want to listen to uh, books. And I just, I went to the library and I got, I think, I think back then they let you take two out at a time. So I was in there <laughs> every For the books on tape. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> so. Because they had yeah. a limited number of them. So. Have you seen yeah. the meme that's like, that's like audio books, like now in large print? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, one of my friends sent me that and was like, is this what you do? And I was like, what? <laughs> what does that mean that I'm screaming into the microphone? <laughs> but you have to hear like an armful like out. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, and I can't even imagine doing pickups for that. <laughs> oh, I could not even. I it would even never sound the same. That. They would oh, never sound the same if you were just screaming the entire book. <laughs> you Oh, that would be terrible. <laughs> Splicing together the tape, like literally having to splice together yeah. tape. Crazy. Yeah, those were I can only imagine how those were put together. Like I mean yeah. I can I can imagine it, but it's just like, whoa. Yeah, that would have been terrible. Oh crazy. But yeah, uh that's what um I'm a big audiobook. I still am. I'm getting uh this was my year to go and get uh therapy for my audiobook in all caps. My <laughs> Oh, you're fucking okay. Thank you, PJ. <laughs> but yeah, uh, this was my year to start actually reading. Uh, not that audiobooks isn't reading, but just reading with my eyeballs. Um, <laughs> so I've started doing that this year. Um, but yeah, um, she scared the crap out of me <laughs> when I saw her leave. I was like, she was bananaed. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, but yeah, I was um, trying to. I was trying to laugh at PJ with emojis, and then it swiped right, and I was like, "Ah, no. oh, there it is! You laughed at him. You got it. You got it. <laughs> you laughed at him. Excellent. <laughs> I was laughing with him. But yeah, so that's kind of. I started writing out of. Uh, I published out of you know, because I was pissed off at somebody. Hey, that's sometimes a very good motivation. <laughs> I can't do this. Watch me. Mm -hmm. We love that energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who wants to go next? 
I don't write, so I pass. <laughs> Jen can go next. She writes. I think. I think she writes. Jen, do you write? Do you have I write a, a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think I saw a novella around here somewhere of yours. Yeah, no, that's not my style. <laughs> novella um, was like chapter one. Right. Yeah, basically, <laughs> two hour long chapter one. Um, it was three. Was it? Oh, that's right. I keep chipping myself an hour. It was three. Um, yep, because we had to splice the uh, the first chapter into two files because Audible has a two hour limit. Yeah. Is it two hour or hour twenty? I thought. No, no, no. It's one hundred and twenty minutes. Okay, yeah, one hundred and twenty minutes. Excuse me. Yes. Yeah. 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 I had to do that for a couple chapters <laughs> in the longer chapter book. One yeah. <laughs> yeah, I write long books. Um, the first <laughs> book I read that really got me into wanting to write, I was S. E. Hinton's The Outsiders. And then Susan Kay's version of The Phantom of the Opera, where she actually tells, like, birth to death Eric's story. And it's fantastic. See what I did there? Um, <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Fan. And that's what got me into... Yeah. I actually, I actually stole it from my school library. Because I couldn't find it anywhere. Like, Barnes & Noble, like, didn't have it. It's, like, really old book. So I, like, backpacked that thing and, like, slipped through, like, you know, the little bar things. And then ran down the guidance <laughs> office and out the fucking gym. And I was like, yes, this is mine! And then I, I've, I've read it every year, like, three times. Ever since. Awesome. If I see it in a thrift shop, I have to buy it. So if the government's tracking me, they know where I am by those sales. By the books, yeah. Because I have to buy that. I have to buy that book <laughs> whenever I, I see it. I don't know if any of you, um, your guys' local libraries do it, but ours do like interlibrary loans between themselves. But my mm -hmm. college actually did a inter like college library loan, so like I could be like, I want to read this book and I want to read this book, and it would just be like, oh, it'll take three weeks, but here you go. So awesome. Yeah, mine did that. That was very cool. But I needed it mostly for sheet music, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, that too. Or and only this other university has it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, all right, what about you, Laura? I know you said you started writing for your mental health and then you posted, but was there something that was like, what was that like, light bulb? So, I mean, I don't know if there was necessarily like a light bulb that started like my writing, but um, I and one of the weird people that I wasn't honestly a big reader not that long ago. Like I've really only been, you know, well, I, I, always, I always blamed it on the ADHD, like, because um, I was like, well, I just can't focus. I just can't read. Um, but it was, I just hadn't found the genre that I was for yet. Um, but I didn't, know that because obviously when you're in school like there's like certain sets of things or outside of school most kids like you know they were reading harry potter or mm -hmm. like that kind of stuff and i couldn't get into it i'm like i tried reading all the books that everyone else was reading and never did anything and um then i you know kids of gray came out i picked that baby up read it and i was like ooh, and then discovered like way better romance novels um, than that yes <laughs> no shame on it but no i mean thought still, it was a gateway yes i still have a soft spot for that book <laughs> but um and um whatever gets people like, to read like i'm not gonna shame anybody exactly like. and i always like to brag el james follows me on tiktok so you know nice. uh, oh okay <laughs> i i might have guilted guilt tripped her into doing it but you know it's still it's still a follow <laughs> we're, um, yeah. listen we're okay with that because I'll, i'm gonna i'm gonna gloat here amy dawes follows me on facebook we're friends so <laughs> and she only did it because i shamelessly it was like this is the only <laughs> thing that'll ever make me happy in my life so i mean i did yeah i did something similar i was just like how come el james is following all these romance authors but not me and then right <laughs> She's like, here you go. Oh, wow. Are you happy now? <laughs> yeah, all like, the I'll be a pity friend. I don't care. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Well, then, yeah. Paige, what about your favorite book series or book then? Uh, and remember who's sitting in this panel here, Paige. Oh, well, no. I'm 100% honest. With all we of can, we can say the it's one that started her reading journey. 
I was so like my dad taught me to read really, really young. I, I got best reader in kindergarten and I had read like all of Laura Engels by the time I was in like first or second grade. I didn't necessarily understand all of it, but I had read it. Um, so like I've, I've always been a big reader and I have, um, I got into reading romance, like sixth grade. You know, my best friends, like mom had an entire like book stack. And so we would just be like. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah, and why that, are you like, doing that? We are, uh, we actually found each other reading the same romance novel. So I technically read romance novels like before, but like we were reading the same one under our desks in Spanish class. And then we were best friends. Um, but, <laughs> but um, I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I can't. I mean, asking me to pick like a favorite book is like impossible, but like it is tough. Favorite yeah. kid, huh? She said it's, it's like, like picking, picking your, your favorite, favorite kid. kid. Preston, um, <gasps> don't you talk that about a shark? <gasps> well, he—that's PJ's kid. He is. No, it depends on the time. Dresden is the quietest one, and th- when I'm recording, that's very important. <laughs> Oh, poor Shireen Kitten. <laughs> no, oh, I love I love all of poor my babies. Shireen. Shireen. She's so bomb. I love I love my babies. I love all of them. I could not possibly pick. Like if there's a fire, all three of them are going in my arms. Like yeah. I don't care. Well, if you can't pick your favorite, what's a book you always go back to read again? The Black Swan by Mercedes Lackey. That's nice. good, because I love Swan Lake. It's my favorite tchaikovsky piece i actually have on vhs because i can't find it on dvd so i have it two copies an old anime version of swan lake that's like terribly dubbed has some really weird squirrels in it um but i have it and i used to, it was my favorite film as a child um i have the swan princess on dvd with the, the don blues film like so anything like i just go back to that or the um the black jewels trilogy by ann bishop because that was like my journey and she's kind of the founder of like that dark fantasy and she was publishing those when I was in high school. So I read daughter of the blood, my freshman year and then Heir to the shadows came out my sophomore year and queen of the darkness was my junior year. So that was kind of like high school. And then gosh, the, the Kushi of dart trilogy by Jacqueline Carey. Yes. 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 Oh my God. They're so good. And I know, I know if Ruthie were on here, those are her favorite. She has Phaedra's Mark tattooed on her back. Oh, so, I love it. Yeah, so like that was all of those, that kind of fantasy, historical, but has romance in it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I definitely, I feel, I feel like I outgrew my romance, like for pleasure <laughs> uh, phase in, um, <laughs> in like high school. <laughs> because then like as an adult, I was because they were all historical. And I'm like, this fever smacks is borderline grape. Like... <laughs> And I don't think I like this anymore. So I actually took like my entire collection of like Catherine Coulter, Catherine E. Woody was who, by the way, they're redoing her audiobooks and releasing them in like June. Um, and I took them all to just like goodwill. <laughs> I was like, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I just, yeah. I have so many. There's no way. There's no way. And I do reread books. So yeah. Yeah. But those are com- those are my comfort reads. The Night Circus, which I will read like over and over and over and over again, because it's a vibe, and it because it's like it's like low stakes, so it's cozy. But also, I love how the battles are artistic and mm. creative. Like everyone's like, "Oh, big battle, action sequence, fire, boom, wands," and I'm like, "No, no, no." I like this battle of creativity and artistic expression through magic. Like no one's trying to hurt each other because they don't even know what this whole huge battle is they just know that they have to do this and so they create things that are supposed to inspire and i find that very beautiful anyway i'll keep talking forever because you asked me that so it's your turn um okay so the first series that i like super duper got into was probably a lot of people's first series is like goosebumps and i was just like ah like tore those up um and then as i got into like um high school and stuff i started um finding books from Piers Anthony who does uh, fantasy books and he does like a, a more like kids version of fantasy called um, the, the Xanth series where it's like fantasy Florida, but like everything's very comedic and it's very like geared towards kids and stuff. And those were like, Oh, it's such, and there's so many books in that series. I don't even, he's probably at over like 150 in that series. I could not even wow. tell you. 
Were you a, were you an Animorphs fan too? I did never read Animorphs, but those would be really in a, in a similar vein to that. But they were fun. And then um, as I got like later into high school, I found uh, the Cushiel's Dart series with that, and I was just like, "Oh, what is this?" <laughs> you would have. I, I love those books. Like I cannot read those enough. So. Yeah, I tried to listen to them, and I, I, I was like, that's not Phaedra's voice, and so I stopped. <laughs> yeah, I, I listened to the couple samples, and I was like, I, mm, no, that's that's not how I hear her either, so. Mm, no, no. Well, they describe her voice as being, like, low and, like, dusky and sensual, and that's not the narrator they got, and it's first mm-hmm. person. And I'm like, I'm sure she's great, but I can't. I yeah. can't. I can't. <laughs> Because she she was unremarkable and she was not not the usual beauty and all that. Yep. Yep. So good. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's where it's really important for authors to pick <laughs> narrators who fit the characters well because readers are gonna be like, mm, nope. <laughs> I mean, and to be fair, I don't know that Jacqueline Carey didn't have a say in picking this name. True don't know that maybe it was who she heard so i mean because that's the other thing too is like you never know yeah her her vision or her idea that might be different than what the readers are getting from it or we got from it yeah right right Right. so i mean it is what it is i just i listened to the sample and i was like i can't phaedra is going to live in my mind as someone else and i'm sure she does a beautiful job but i just i couldn't do it and plus you know you've already read them like four times so it's just like eh, you know (laughs) well you know sometimes you pick up things um auditorily than you do (laughs) Uh, orally TikTok um, then you do like, with, <laughs> with your ears <laughs> with your ears stupid English um. <laughs> it's so true though like that you do pick up other things like by listening to it than you do necessarily just reading it which is um, where I've started um, when I'm like in my editing phase, I actually like listen to the book now. And it, obviously it's like a crappy, just like Siri voice, but just by hearing the words, like while I'm reading, like my final read through before it goes to the editor, I catch so many more errors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I well, author started doing that recently. It was, a, it's a bigger author. She recommended it, I think like a year or two ago to have, have it dictated back to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Scrivener does yeah. that, right? Who? Scrivener, like the program Scrivener will read. Oh it back yeah, Scrivener. Um, Word think... actually does it too. But yeah, Word, mm-hmm. Word or Google Docs, they have a uh, a dictation uh, feature. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, it's it's absolutely atrocious. Oh but, yeah. <laughs> but just to hear that way, it's like, oh wait, that's not the right word, and I didn't even notice it when I was reading through. You know, it, it it's very helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fun, funny story. If you've ever, if you've never heard like an iPhone or an Android with the talkback feature on for people who are visually impaired or not sighted, whew, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. My, there... my favorite thing though, when like I'm listening to like the dictation of the books is the smex scenes. <laughs> um, I oh my cry God. laughing. <laughs> yeah. I... It's terrible. It's so, and one time I even like had to like like record it and send it to a group of people. <laughs> so I was like, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. <laughs> You know what else is really, really funny? This is nuts. But um and I've said this before on a live, but it was a while ago, so I'm gonna say it again. Slow down the narration speed. Oh yeah. <laughs> and do it when <laughs> they're fighting. Do it yeah. during an argument. <laughs> Slow it down to like point nine, point seven five. It is hilarious. hilarious. It is a I've riot. Never, see, I've only ever sped it up because my right, ADHD right. brain, I'm just like, they're talking too slow. Quick. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's uh, like PJ and I, we found out listening to what a uh, Meg, the Meg, the story about the Carcaridon Megalodon. But yeah. he's slowing down every time. He's, he's like, the Carcaridon Megalodon. <laughs> Sounds like you're completely sloshed. I mean, you get through like two minutes of the book in like 10 minutes, but you're, I mean, it's a good time. You don't even need alcohol. It's so much fun. (laughs) That's awesome. It's hilarious. Yeah, that's one of my fun things to do with my group of friends is when I get those fun little audio clips and you take them out of context and I'm like, here you go. (laughs) 
use this to your discretion. <laughs> do you ever get like people who are like, is that you? Is that, or do you ever like change your voice enough where they're like, or are they like, I don't want to listen to this. I don't want to listen to this. Oh yeah. And then, um, and it, it, not that it necessarily bothers me, but I know some people would rather to be gendered correctly with their pronouns. It doesn't necessarily bother me, but like I get called like she and female in person face to face I get I get <laughs> and i'm like you're, you're two feet away from me like come on you know. and and that was one of those things that i was just like hmm i should use this to my advantage so there you go yeah pj does yeah because pj normally talks like he's a he's a high tenor he's very got a similar voice yep. to you. He's a little bit lower but not much but when he does like the Dean voice and he gets down low and does the gravelly thing. My sister-in-law was like, nope, 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 nope. Like, like just left the room like that, that squid octopus. Yep, my, my sister-in-law did that. Yeah. Right out of the room. <laughs> one, of, one of the characters in the current book I'm working on, it his literal, literal name in the book, his nickname is The Beast. And I'm just like, oh, yes. Yes, this is too much fun. <laughs> I feel like, because... I know like a lot of narrators and stuff through TikTok. Um, and if I, the closer I get to someone like as a friend, the harder I have like listening to their audiobooks because I'm just like, ah, we're friends. Especially if it's a spicy scene. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> My mom listens to all of mine, including all the smutty ones, all of them. And she's like, you're actors. I don't care. I don't <laughs> care. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, it doesn't bother me. At first, it was a little weird because it's like when Paige got ready to do my first book, Closing the Distance with PJ, I was like, this is going to get really awkward when they start groaning, you know? And I'm like, am I going to be able to handle this? And then it's like, before we even got to that part, I listened to Paige moan and groan for like 14 other books. And now it's just like, I don't know. It's just kind of normal. I think I think we're all just kind of desensitized to it. So now it's like she just goes, uh, and I'm like, okay, so that's a good one, Paige. Keep going. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But I like, but I like this one better from this other book. Do that one again. Right, so yeah. and pointers. Can you just go up on the end of that moan a little bit more, like, uh, or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Just, uh, just, uh. I need a little more waver in there. No, that one's lower. That one's like, oh, uh. like, it needs more of a gasp in it, like a. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, right. it we almost really it's really details. weird because it almost gets to the point like it, with her where it's almost like you're listening to like a corn scene, like you know, like behind the scenes, and it's like it's no longer this sexy thing. It's like okay, she'll she'll do it, and she'll be like, okay, was that good, guys? And we're like, eh, yeah, that's good. Okay, <laughs> cut. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, you did show up at the right time. Perfect timing. <laughs> And then if you're anything like me, when I tend to make mistakes, I I immediately like break out in the song and I'm just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> those, yeah, those are yeah, great yeah. bloopers. <laughs> yeah. When you're just like, oh, 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 no, 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 right out of that scene. <laughs> I have um, I have like somebody like in mind for um, one of like my books for an audiobook like and it's like in the middle of the Sienna series so it's like way ways away um, but I was like you're perfect for the one guy I'm like but we need someone else for the other guy and he was like well my brother actually would be a good fit and I was like you're gonna do an audiobook with your brother <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get awkward real quick here. Uh, wow. like there's... It's not like we record. I mean, they wouldn't be recording at the same time. It's like it wouldn't be like with each other. That's a different <laughs> genre altogether. Just, yeah. just make sure you don't tell Amazon that. Right. right. <laughs> just different yeah. names, and if they want to share the money, I mean, whatever. It's not they have to listen to it either. <laughs> they send off their parts. They get like back. It never happened. It never happened. I told I I was teasing my brother because I was recording Save Your Book One when my brother um got really really <laughs> sick and I flew down to visit him and I was so just trying to cheer him up and I was like you know I'm recording this book right now but like the main character is basically you so like when you heal we're gonna kick PJ out and you can do Dean and he was like mm -mm. <laughs> but, uh -huh. but it made him he's like mm, no no oh, I don't support you but no no. 
Yeah, I would feel weird about that. I would, yeah. That would yeah. be a veto for me. <laughs> but the best part, I mean, well, one, he wouldn't do it, but two, who would pseudonym or three, they'd just be the last name and be like, oh, married couple. Yeah. True. Like, nobody would know. But I would know, and it would disturb me. <laughs> <laughs> What you don't know. Don't listen to it, Paige. Save that to the end of the book. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Performed by brother and sister. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Brother and sister act. (laughs) No, no. But it did make Sam. It it amused him. So, (laughs) good. So, do you feel like, Laura, because I mean, you you predominantly only write romance and it's heavier on the, the messy time right yeah so do you feel like it's kind of lost it's is is smexy scenes just kind of more just like another day at the office now where it's like okay they got a a goes into b to create c (laughs) i don't know like i think that's also why sometimes i really do enjoy writing mm because there's like different things and i'm just like hey uh so it spices it up (laughs) also um also, I just finished writing um, a schminky book, so there's like a lot different things for those smexy time scenes, um, and that was really fun. Um, I think because I don't know because my characters are all so different, I feel like um, they kind of come across like some are more aggressive and some are more passionate, right? And like, so it doesn't quite feel like another stay at the office but I do think I would 100% become like desensitized to it like I'm just like da, da. <laughs> do you, go, you yeah. ever like write and then you're like uh insert smack scene here and then keep going like, with the story <laughs> no pun I on can't the do that um I've I, I can't like I have to read an order I know some people like jump around or they'll be like insert something here I'm, I can't it like I, I don't know if it's like the control freak in me or why but it's like i get like itchy skin um <laughs> and so i have to like <laughs> it's the artistic vision you're like no 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 what happens in this scene is going to inform how they interact in the next scene yes, therefore no yeah yes. you know sometimes that does happen though yeah. it really does sometimes well, they'll be in the throes of glow and <laughs> you know He'll say something, and it will completely just change the course of your entire plot. It's very Absolutely. upsetting. <laughs> on on that note, though, I, nine times out of ten, will not write a smexy scene until I have everything else done. <laughs> I get so angry at him. <laughs> I love smexy scenes. Oh, my gosh. No, I can't. I get so mad because I'm like, I gotta, I gotta bring out dolls and, like... <laughs> What are they going to do that's different today? I know they already did that one in the previous book. This is a different There's time. characters. There's times where I'm like to my husband, I'm like, stand here. And I just like measure myself to him. Yes. Like, <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, okay. Good, good. thank you. Yeah. You do it. <laughs> is this accurate? <laughs> yes. Hold on. I need to see if this is physically possible. Great. Well, but I, so I'm just like, uh, where does your parts line up with my body? Is it my stomach? Where is it? Because um, right. so, a lot of times I write characters roughly the same height as me and my husband. I've noticed that recently. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, so, we will. <laughs> is the counter the right height? Right. Can yes. I point myself on? Can he lift me? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, and I just all important that one time questions. too. I sat on the couch. Will a like, stool be needed? Between my legs, I need to know things. <laughs> right. Does this type of couch work for this action? Because sometimes the cushions are too soft, or if they're like a sectional, or if it one piece. I mean, these are things we yeah. need to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You need to get those artistic dolls. You know, the ones that like people draw to like figure out how like things bend. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, or the really yeah. um, the ones with all the joints, like they make like regular um, action collectibles and stuff that are like that with too many joints. So Transformers. Yeah, <laughs> I had an author friend who wrote um, a scene on a bike, 
And she she went to her husband and she was like, I need to know how this works. And he's like, it doesn't. And she was <laughs> like, well, it's a book. So we're going to take a little bit of creative license with it. But we make it as close. And he was like, well, I guess if we're going to take sight. <laughs> so they just sat down and discussed how it would work to do things on a bike. Like a bicycle or a motorcycle? A motorcycle. Yeah, that's doable. Jen has a scene in one of her books, <laughs> in fact. Yeah, based on uh, actual events, so <laughs> it works. There you go. See, it's, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell her that. I'll be like, you know what? I just talked to someone. It is real. <laughs> it's real. Disgust. <laughs> It was physically discussed. <laughs> yes, yeah. it happened. Yeah, That's awesome. The recent, so like Chris, when you did like, have you done dual or duet at all? I have not had the chance to do those yet. So, looking forward to one eventually. I was gonna say, it's like, how do you like? So when when Jen asked us to audition, I was like, I've never actually listened to a romance audio book in my life. Like how do they do these scenes? Like what all is involved? So like we had to go and like listen, but the ones that are free on Audible are hilarious. They're hilarious. I mean, we laughed so hard. So I just didn't know like how, like, so how like, how much moaning do we put into this? Like, because it's not the same as like an audio drama or like mm -hmm. the, the Patreon stuff that you hear. The books are different they are still narration even if it's like first person but so how breathy do you get do you insert a moan if it just says that, that kind of stuff so i was just curious like did you when you started recording did you go and listen to get an idea where you're just like i'm just like this is what i'm gonna do <laughs> yeah you definitely like just kind of listen and be like okay well like how are we gonna make like everyday stuff different from like ooh intimate time stuff and you know you just kind of figure out what's going to work especially for your voice and then especially what's going to work and come across in the recording so like mic technique i guess is what you would call it so i just didn't know if you did any research i just needed to oh, yeah. on oh, yeah. like, how, this, how did it, do people do this for real like oh oh yeah they do okay um there's there's a quite interesting netflix show called dirty lines i think it's called it's quite funny. It's uh, it has to do with I think it's based on somewhat of a true story of um, adult lines in Sweden, in Denmark, in Denmark. That's where it was, and like college college kids like finding out about it and becoming part of the boom of it and stuff. It's quite interesting to listen to, <laughs> to watch. Um, but before, so I've never been a massive like. Um, audiobook listener um i've recently got more into it um but because i like romance novels and hearing the scenes um sometimes it's like i i'm just 80 shades of red uh so <laughs> but before i started listening to um audiobooks i had heard some different types of audios um and i was like is our romance audio books like this <laughs> how do they like, compare what did you find in your research <laughs> um well i mean the other audios are definitely far more explicit and Active? like, <laughs> and like more, more moany I mean, Moni. <laughs> sound effects there you go that's a good word for it they have more sound effects because i was like is that what i because that was also what I thought like romance audiobooks were going to be like and I was like I can't listen to those I was like especially because people are like oh you're going on a long drive have an audiobook I was like what a drive I was like I crashed my car <laughs> and then I was like oh they're not as sound effecty <laughs> still might crash your car though <laughs> Still my crash guy. Depending. Depending on what you're listening to. I'm I'm that person who will like turn it up and be like, what? What? <laughs> In the grocery store parking lot, like yes, this is what I'm listening to. <laughs> I, I would die. I would too. Honestly, like I'll be listening to an audiobook and I'll be in line at Starbucks. And like as soon as I make my order, I turn everything off and like I double check it to make sure it's not gonna turn back. It doesn't accidentally turn back on like oh oh. I one time, one time it happened. 
because <laughs> my damn car synced up to my phone and it keeps turning back on. Was it your husband? It, it did it one time and it was PJ <laughs> freaking moaning on Savior. He was growling or something during a smexy scene and I'm like and the girl was like, oh, that sounds like a good book. <laughs> I'm like, no, I can tell yeah. you what it is. Thanks, DJ. <laughs> I was so mortified. And it's like, I get, I get, uh, yeah, I know. You're real sorry, PJ. I get real red real fast. So it's like, I'm purple <laughs> by the time she's talking to me. So, yeah. Well, I was thrift like, shopping with my parents while I wasn't shopping. They were, I was trapped in the car. I got roped into this. And Paige was narrating a schmexy scene on Discord. Oh, and my I phone only lowers like so much like you can still clearly hear like everything so my parents <laughs> I wasn't going to shut it off because I was being supportive I was being a supportive <laughs> friend and um, they got to hear every all of it and it was like that was it was graphic you know, which book you, it was, you know which book it was. I know which book it was. Yeah. We all remember. But yeah. That was a graphic one. So now, yeah, now my mom calls. Is that, is that your friend with the dirty mouth? It is. Yeah. It is. It is my friend with the dirty mouth. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but talking about, like, um, your mom reading or sharing, like, the things that you do, like, my mom kind of did something similar because I was like, um, so this is definitely more on the adult side. So, you you don't have to listen to it. You don't have to share it if you don't want to. She's like, no. And I was, like, debating how I was going to share it because I was, like, because I went back and forth on it because I was like, man, should I do this under a pseudonym? Should I not? Like, what's going to be the best long-term decision and all that stuff? And then I was just like, you know what? I don't have any shame in that. So, and then mom like immediately shared it on Facebook as soon as it was available. And I was like, oh, well, she beat me to the punch on that one. I share all of mine on Facebook. And then they usually have to be like, dad, yeah. and my dad is always like, can I read this one? And I'm like, dad, you can read any of them. But whether or not mm -hmm. you enjoy it is on you. <laughs> That's like my yeah. mother-in-law. She, she actually tries to be a lot more supportive than even my own parents. Because my dad's just like, nope, not going to read it. But then she um, she recommended my, I think she actually like lent my dark romance to a little old lady as like an introduction to my books. And I was like, that is not an introduction to my yeah. books. Dive in, both feet. Now nothing will shock her. Because, <laughs> yeah, I guess she had said something to Dan and she's just like, apparently there's a stocking and a pillowcase. And I don't know. <laughs> I'm just like, there is. You're, you're correct. You definitely were reading it. Good job. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I, I know exactly. Because he was like, I don't know what book she's reading, but there's a pillowcase scene and a stop. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm, got, yeah. I know what book that is. <laughs> I know what book that is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good scene, actually. <laughs> oh, I like that scene. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, like, my dad will be like, he'll be like, oh, so now whenever I post on Facebook, I'm like, this is so and so. My such and I'll tag him, like, Dad, you don't want to read this book. Oh. <laughs> so, we're just going to preempt. And so he texts me, he's like, are there any of yours I can read? And I was like, sure, Dad, you can read this one, this one, this one, and this one. Well, I was like, well, you can read all of them. It's always my thing. I'm like, you can read them. I'm not ashamed. Because he's like, maybe you should do like a pseudonym. And I was like, oh, no, if it embarrasses you, I'm 100% keeping my name. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So yes, it, it is my name. It's my real name. And yeah, like I, I have no shame. I have nothing to be ashamed of. So no. I'm proud. Of, and also I don't work in an industry where it would matter. Like I'm not like a teacher. They're like, like, oh my God, this kindergarten teacher is narrating smut. Like I don't have to worry about that. So it's not a big deal. The but, only yeah. reason I chose a pen name was um, just to have like a little bit of space like when it came to social media and stuff and also I, I have kids so I kind of again that space made me feel safer like for them sure. and so, yeah yeah but absolutely. Laura is my real name I just picked a different last name yeah yeah because I'm like you. I won't respond to people if I pick a completely different name they'll be like so it's I'll be like Who's that? oh Who's that's me, me? That? me? oh <laughs> yeah, yeah like, I, I made that mistake I picked a really weird pen name like three years ago and 
I used it more so for my artwork, but people would call me and I'd be like, who? <laughs> oh, that's me. Yeah. D. Okay. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> so yeah, I had to end up going with DJ so that I actually responded when people talked to me. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just, if, I mean, I understand like if people want to keep it 100% like separate oh. or like, but the narrators who are like, you will never know. And I'm like, no, I, I, I know because your voice is this, is this, is the same right. I'm, like, I'm not gonna out you but like i know <laughs> who you are for yeah. real and, but but okay like i yeah but I, I don't know if that's just like a mystique thing or what because most of the time well the only other reason was like i'm starting out i'm still relatively new and if i separate into a pseudonym then suddenly my catalog looks half as mm-hmm. full yeah like i haven't done right. as much mm-hmm. so i'm just like you know what i don't care i don't care i'm an actor yeah whatever yeah absolutely right right 100 percent. yeah i use my real name i'm, I'm just out of f's I'm just at, completely out so <laughs> with my name i yeah. also if somebody has like a pen name i'm like don't tell me your real name because i will use it by accident and i don't want to out you so if you have a pen name you're not allowed to tell me your real name because I will accidentally be like, hey. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, had, I had two of my authors. Yeah. Yeah. Where I was like, and she was like, please don't use my real name. And I was like, can you start emailing me from your author account then? Yeah. That yeah. would be great. <laughs> yeah, so like, I'm I'll not have- seeing like yeah. getting this repeated thing in my head of what your actual name is please send me it from your author email thank you there's a yeah. few people that um like i know their real name but even in like our private conversations i call them their pen name because i'm like <laughs> if i start using your real name we're gonna go yeah. live <laughs> one day and i'm gonna be like hey oops <laughs> yep and then i, I would I- hate myself and i would fall into a hole of depression anxiety <laughs> like what did i do yeah what did i do <laughs> any for what about you chris any plans to use a pseudonym if you get into like going into like ya or if you wanted to do middle grade would you switch to a different name yeah if i did anything that was definitely more um that needed to not be connected to like romance i'd definitely choose a different pen name um and then i do have one in mind for if i do something that's like way out there um so yeah but we'll see what happens would it be a secret pseudonym or would it be like a this is me and this Um, is me no um if i if i do anything that's like way out there that i need to make sure that it's disconnected from my day-to-day life um i've chosen edward frost so oh okay Mm -hmm. because i thought that'd be nice and mysterious so I like, I like it. I like it. <laughs> right. Well, we're about two minutes from ten, and it's my bedtime, and Shireen is giving me death stares <laughs> because it's time to put the boys to bed. Um, <laughs> she, she's she's right there. She's very unhappy because Dresden's up there with her. Aww. She was just glaring at me, but she's like, "Um, ma- uh, mom, it's time. It's past your bedtime." <laughs> You know what's funny? You say 10 is your bedtime and it's 8 o'clock my time, but it's oh. almost my bedtime too because I go to bed like an old lady. So I was like, this works out well. Yes. Well, normally I'm in bed earlier. We put the boys to bed around, like, well, Odin starts getting antsy at 8.30. Yes, I'm talking about my cats. He starts getting antsy about 8.30. He comes up and he harasses and he meows. And if you don't pay attention, he starts climbing things like he knows about it. He knows that it's bedtime. And then we ask if it's bedtime and he runs into the front room. Because in the, which I don't understand because then he gets mad when we shut the door. But, like, I'm like, you ran in there. And it happens every <laughs> night. But but yeah, that, that's that's bedtime. And then Shireen has the rest of the house to, like, to herself for a few hours because Hi, they Allie. don't let her get off the leave. desk. They're bullies. They don't let her get off the desk and, like, use the bathroom. So, And she's a drama <laughs> queen, so even if they're in another room with the doors not closed, she won't do it because she's a, a calico and she's insane. Right, Shireen Cat? She's glaring at Odin. So, <laughs> so anyway, on that note... Laura and Chris, give us your, a little like end of live spiel. Tell us your name, where to find you, like titles, that kind of stuff. Um, I'll so, let Laura go first. Sure. So 
So all of my books are on Amazon. All of them are in Kindle Unlimited. Um, like we've kind of discussed throughout the live, I have, I think, 15 books published anywhere from like rock star romance to dark romance to bodyguards to queer. I have everything. Um, and I'm at Laura John on, I think, all social media. Oh, sorry, at author Laura John on all social media, except um, Facebook. It's at author Laura J because I messed up doing something. So, um, so I accidentally stole my own tag. <laughs> but yeah. Awesome. Thank you. What about you, Chris? Um, and you can find me. I've got the link tree in my, uh, are we allowed to say that word? Probably. The B word? Yeah. 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 Okay. Live, the link- fine. yeah. Right. live, I think it's okay. Yeah. Um, there's the link tree in the bio that has my links to uh, my catalog of almost 10 books now. And um, I also have a song out on Spotify because I recorded a song for an author who had sea shanties in his book, which was really interesting. Um, So I got to record, um, what did I title the song? This Marauder is Done. (laughs) Nice. And um, yeah, and then... For fun, I play video games and stuff, so you can sometimes catch me on Twitch playing video games. We play a lot of Dead by Daylight, so we like horror games, so. Awesome. Nice. Nice. All right. Jen, you want to go? Oh, um, I'm here. I have a link tree <laughs> in my Bible. <laughs> I'm kidding. On my bio. Um, you could click that. I'm on Instagram. I'm kind of on Facebook, but since I'm like permanently banned on there, I'm really kind of not present, but yeah, I'm mostly here. Deej. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm DJ. Um, <laughs> you can find me everywhere at author DJ or DJ Kramer. Um, you can go to my website, DJ I'm, I'm super official. So I'm, I'm pretty, pretty much anywhere that says DJ Kramer. That's, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> what was your name again? I can't remember. So, okay. Amy? Something? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> well, thinking. Um, yeah, I'm Paige. My link, I have a link tree that has all the stuff. Um, so, yeah, I think next week, am I wrong? I think next week our guests are Dakota and Marcus. Yes. Okay, yep. next week, Dakota Wild. Yeah, I'm always that, week? right? I think so, Jen. It's on, yeah. the, it's on the schedule. I'm just not looking at it. And last time I move to another screen dj freaked out so i can't do that right now um <laughs> i think it's dakota wild and marcus right it is. Next week. yeah Thanks it is jen. okay cool and jen is hosting um so make sure you give everybody a follow we'll post the thing later in the week but thank you so much laura and chris for joining us tonight yes, the next episode will be uploaded to our youtube channel which is books and audio and you can see all the previous episodes there too Have a good night, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.